we're going to talk about community growth mistakes, things, beliefs, things that might be holding you back as you're thinking about growing your community. The first one is waiting until a launch to grow an audience. I think that some of us put a lot of weight into a launch, especially if we have a community that's not open all the time. We're like, I'm going to focus all of my energy into the community now. And next time a launch comes around, then I'll start the growth piece. The problem with that is that it's hard to start from zero. And that's what you're doing each time that you're starting the growth engine again. It's much easier to go from a moving vehicle and speed up a little bit during a launch than it is to go from like fully stopped and not doing anything to grow your audience. Growth is a practice. And the more you do it, the more you find time to do it. And the more kind of your the more it compounds for you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the answer to this one is to pick consistent growth actions that you can actually stick to. So what's a thing you can do every day, every week, like whatever you choose, growth that you test and you know that it works and then you have a consistent way of bringing people in. The benefit of doing this from a community perspective is that you're building trust with the with your potential members. So they're not just hearing from you when you're ready to invite them in. They are building a relationship with you and there are other touch points for you to connect with them even when you're not trying to sell them something. Okay, the next one, next mistake that we make is expecting the next batch of members to be the same as our current members. I have been noticing that a lot of community builders, there is like a lot of excitement when they first launch the community. And a lot of the people who joined the community were people who have been following them for years, waiting for them to launch the community. So they had already built an audience in some kind of way, even if it was a small audience. And the first people who joined were the people who were like most eager to join. And that's great. And those are really great founding members. But it's hard to replicate that type of member when you're consistently bringing in new people and growing. So your job from a growth perspective changes as your community grows. So it's important to make room for people who you didn't initially consider your ideal members. This doesn't necessarily mean widening who your community is for, but it's important to consider People who maybe you think won't perfectly fit into the group of 12 people that you have there, but who might add something else to the conversation and who are still ideal members, but they just don't look like you thought your ideal members should look like. And the benefit of doing this is you're letting your community, as it grows, you're expanding your vision for what your community is and what you do and what you bring to people. The next one is, this is one that I see this mistake a lot. It's doing one-off growth activities. So a lot of us will put all our eggs in, oh, I was invited to do a summit. And that's like going to be my growth activity for the fall or something like that. And that's great to do like a one-off thing like that. And maybe you put a ton of work into your presentation and you're doing this custom thing. And you're like, I'm hoping to get all of these members from this one thing. And we can't guarantee that's what's gonna happen. So instead of putting all our eggs into one event, one partnership, one social media campaign, whatever it is, it's important to really build a process and be able to repeat a lot of the things that you're doing so that you don't burn out from having to do a bunch of one-off things. So what that looks like is how can you host the same workshop, but to different people, 10 different times? How can you build email sequences so that you're not like communicating with everyone one-on-one? There is like a way for people to understand what you're building without you having to do the work. 
How can you understand your conversion numbers really well so that you can see what's working and do more of what's working and also repurpose your content. If you wrote something on LinkedIn, can you bring that over to a different social media platform? Did you send that to your email list? And making sure that you're doing less work, but building a process where you can do this one kind of thing over and over again and recycle a lot of the same content. And the benefit of this is how you get compounding results. If you're just focused on one-off partnerships and one-off activities, it's really hard to compound that growth. Okay, the next one is dreading the process and burning out. A lot of us, especially community people, I find, we just find we want to be genuine with our people. Maybe social media feels fake. We don't want to spend all our time there. We have all these things that we tell ourselves. And, but because someone told us that we have to do X, Y, Z, and we have to do it in this particular way, a lot of times we're doing it, but it's not aligned with our community and what we want to do. And then we end up burning out in the process because we're doing something. And a lot of times we're not even successful in bringing new people into the community because we're just like following a strategy instead of like being aligned with it. So choosing activities that you can do long-term is a much better way of looking at it. And what that's going to get you is longevity and uh, you're not going to be, you're not going to need to burn out because you've merged what you're doing in your day to day and growth becomes a part of it. And then the last one is picking channels that don't match your community vibes. So we'll talk a little bit more about this, but the what you want to do is pick growth channels that match your connection to learning ratio. And we'll talk about what that means. So if you have a very teaching heavy curriculum type community, then your growth channel, you should pick one that matches that value that you bring to your me- to the people once you become members. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And what that gets you is you get, it's easier to convert people if you're bringing what's happening into your in your community into your growth process and in the way that you're inviting people in. 